A drone attack was launched on the city of Izhevsk in Russia's Udmurtia Republic on the morning of November 17, local telegram channels reported. Ukrainian kamikaze drones targeted the Kupol factory in the city. The plant produces TOR anti-aircraft missile complexes, radar stations, and Garpia drones. One of the drones reportedly fell into the territory of the enterprise, as a result of which the windows of one of the workshops were broken. The footage circulated on telegram channels shows an explosion after the drone strike. One person was injured during the incident. The workers of the factory were evacuated. It should be noted that Izhevsk, the capital of the Udmurt Republic, is located 1,200 kilometers from the border with Ukraine. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky commented Friday on German Chancellor Scholz's phone call to Russian President Vladimir Putin. During his nightly video address, the Ukrainian leader described the phone conversation between Russian President Vladimir Putin and Scholz as a Pandora's box and warned that there will be no Minsk III. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz on Friday urged Russia to be willing to negotiate with Ukraine in his first call with President Putin in nearly two years. The Kremlin responded that Moscow was open to new talks and pointed to Putin's earlier proposal that Kiev should cede territory and back off its plans to join NATO. Government spokesman Stefan Hebestreit said Scholz condemned Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine during the call and called on Putin to end it by withdrawing troops that launched a full-scale invasion of the country in February 2022. That conflict reaches its 1,000-day mark next week. Kanzler Scholz said to me that he is going to call Putin. The call of Olaf, in my opinion, is a screen of Pandora. Now there are other conversations, other conversations, just a lot of words. І це саме те, що Путін давно хоче. Йому вкрай важливо послабити його ізоляцію, ізоляцію Росії і вести перемовини, як звичайні перемовини, які не будуть нічим завершувати, так як він десятиліттями робив. Це давало можливість Росії нічого не змінювати в своїй політиці, нічого не робити по суті. І якраз це і призвело до цієї війни. Розуміємо всі ці виклики зараз, знаємо, як діяти. І хочемо попередити. Мінська-3 не буде. Нам потрібен реальність. Thus, on Thursday, November the 14th, photos of two 170mm M1989 Koksan self-propelled howitzers of North Korean manufacture appeared online. They were on a railway platform traveling through Krasnoyarsk. There are two possible explanations for this situation, writes Forbes. First, a North Korean artillery unit would deploy to the front lines in Western Russia or Ukraine. Second, a Russian unit would operate tracked howitzers, which are manned by four people and can fire shells weighing 100 pounds or more at least 25 miles or 40 kilometers. The latter makes more sense, the article says. The Kremlin is currently distributing North Korean troops to existing units of the Russian armed forces. Soldiers from North Korea are already present in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation. But to continue military operations in Ukraine, Russia needs not only foreign troops but also foreign equipment. The Russian military's artillery stockpiles are declining at least as fast as its tanks and combat vehicles. Earlier this year, a survey of Russian depots counted 3,000 self-propelled howitzers down from 4,500 in 2021 and most of those 3,000 guns are likely too corroded to be of any use. 
Russian artillerymen would certainly welcome a few shipments of North Korean M1989s. They are roughly equivalent to Russia's largest tracked howitzers, the 2S7. As of 2022, the Russians had about 300 2S7s in service or storage. A tenth of them were disabled or captured in combat, and many of those in storage are beyond repair after decades of being exposed to the elements. The problem from the Russians' perspective is ammunition, the author emphasizes. It is noted that the M1989 is the only widest used 170mm howitzer. Only the DPRK industry produces ammunition for it. Russia has established domestic production of ammunition for most calibers, but in the case of the M1989, this is impossible. Therefore, whether they will be used depends directly on Pyongyang. Logistics have always been weak in the Russian army, and the delivered howitzers may run out of shells at some point, says Estonian soldier and analyst Artur Rehi. Such deliveries are further evidence that Russia is increasingly dependent on its allies in a full-scale war against Ukraine. The M1989 Koksan is a North Korean self-propelled artillery unit with a caliber of 170 mm. According to open sources, the firing range depends on the type of shells. Thus, with conventional shells, it is about 40 kilometers, and with rockets, up to 60 kilometers. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin arrived in Darwin on Saturday as he began a touring involving stops in Australia, the Philippines, Laos, and Fiji. The U.S. Department of Defense said Austin would meet his counterparts from Australia and Japan while in Darwin.